thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time to say global stories making headlines in our national dailies. And joining us to review the papers is Dr. Ambrose Ibukwe. He's the Chairman Guild of Public Affairs Analyst of Nigeria, Enugu State Chapter. He's joining us from Enugu this morning. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Yeah. And the name is Dr. Ibukwe, not Ibukwe. Oh, uh, Ibukwe. Ibukwe. I beg your pardon. Yes. Thanks for yeah, the question. Yeah, I don't people add the for me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Ambrose Igboke, got it. All right, thank you for joining us this morning. So we'll be starting with The Guardian, and this leads with what is on everyone's lips at the moment. So it says, Labor demands inflation-proof pay, frequent wage review. Now, um, the federal government has come out to add about 25 and 35% to the current um, wage award at the moment. And labor has called it mischievous. In fact, people have been talking about it and saying it is not sufficient enough. Um, labor demanded for 615,000 Naira. Now, we don't know if that is even, able, if the federal government will be able to pay that. But if we we're putting about 25 to 35% on the 30,000 naira that we currently have, that would just be about 45,000 naira ish. Um, do you think this is enough? And do you think what labor is demanding for might be enough or too much? And if the federal government might just get back to the drawing board and say, what is that inflation proof pay? And they will also put a frequent wage review. Uh, basically, uh the problem with uh, the economy of Nigeria is that the salaries uh, that is earned by workers do not have commensurate value to uh, uh, the hyperinflation that is happening in the economy. So that causes kind of disconnect between what is earned and what is spent. Mm -hmm. uh, because of this, labor has tried to see they can adjust uh, following the inflation trend, but it, labor cannot even catch up because inflation in Nigeria is so, you know, uh, in its in geometric proportion, it, it, it doubles each night. So the labor cannot even catch on. I, I, I think what is happening in Nigeria is the value of the Naira. It's not even about how much you take home. I remember growing up with my father, or growing up with my in Bora State, or growing up with my uncle in Bori. And my uncle salary as a very senior staff, in, as a senior staff in Delta State Company, Alaja, then it used to be just like uh, around 1,500, 1,700. And that was enough. That was huge then. And again, the federal government was, you know, very purposeful then in uh, with their civil service. They, they provided you with housing. They mm -hmm. provided you with uh, health because there was a, it was a clinic. They provided you with uh, school uh, education for your children because there was a staff clinic and um, staff school. So what you had uh, was just, you know, they provided you with your furniture. They provided you with house. So what you just spent your money on was just basic little uh, personal things. Now, those things don't even exist anymore. Uh, civil Service provides his own or her own housing, provides health care, provides education, provides everything for him or herself. So the, the, the bulk of the expenditure like, relies on the salary. This was not so before. So Nigeria is actually retrogressing. And we should look for ways to, uh, to really, really make sure that our, our workers are, uh, you know, not only in the pri public sector, but also in the private sector. So no amount of uh, even uh, minimum wage we make the worker be able to you know uh live a fulfilled life in terms of economics the problem is that the hyperinflation will not even allow you to enjoy uh the money you are being paid so government should try everything possible to look at economic indices to revamp our production sector why would we why we are suffering hyperinflation is that we are not producing anything our currency is not competitive with the dollar uh, we are we just there importing everything we don't have jobs. We don't have a, a production capacity to even fulfill our domestic needs. So when you work, wear all these things together, uh, we now found out that our currency is low. And we cannot buy the things we are supposed to buy because they are imported with dollars. So like Nigeria must uh, labor union and workers have the right to actually uh, request and demand for increased wage because the hyperinflation has nullified whatever they are receiving and made it very, very a bit nonsensical of uh, Nigeria switch. Already, uh, states like Lagos and Edo have already doubled it 100% from the uh, from 30% uh, 30,000 naira minimum wage. They have replaced uh, they announced 70,000 naira. So the federal government can do better than the states and uh, make it work. But ultimately, the final solution lies 
in making our, our naira to have value <laughs> but it, we don't even know this when they talk about uh, minimum wage who is paying the minimum wage to who because if the Edo state has said 70,000, uh, and Lagos state has said that whatever the federal government decides as minimum wage they are going to pay, you go to Cross River State, they have decided on, on 40,000 Naira minimum wage instead of the 30 and all that. States seem to be taking their own initiative and doing what they want to do. So when they finally agree on the living wage which the, which the president is saying he's concerned about, who is going to be paying? Is it only to federal workers? Or are state workers also going to enjoy? And uh, even the private it, sector is the as private well. sector going to have some kind of leverage that will make them make more money and, and increase the weight of the people they employ? Who is even benefiting from this 615,000 Naira? Uh, the, the issue is that uh, when Labour was, uh, you know, uh, having um, negotiations for these uh, minimum wage increase uh, some years back, uh, these issues came up. And there was a time there there is a kind of tripartite uh, meeting, the federal government, the labor, and the states, because even the federal governors, so the governors forum made uh, some submissions that they cannot uh, match what the federal government will be paying in terms of minimum wage, and they don't have uh, such uh, capacity. Uh, therefore, uh, there was an agreement that the states could implement uh, what they could, but uh, you know, have the barest minimum, but the federal government could do more. Uh, so there, there's, there are no serious coordinated uh, attempts to have uh, a national minimum wage. I think what is being fought for now, obviously, are people working in the um, with the federal government. The state government have already said that they can they will pay what they have to pay. Uh, so I think now they should uh, formulate a kind of dichotomy in your categorization of the payment. Uh, let the federal workers, usually the federal workers, always end. Uh, uh, higher than the state workers in many cases uh, in the past. So that can be done, except for states who are rich, you know, who have this oil allocation, who have a uh, huge population and resources that could match the states, just like Lagos and Rivers, you know, could match what the federal government is uh, uh, paying. But I think there should be categorization. As for the private sector, the private sector, you don't tell the private sector person what to pay his, uh, his, uh, his worker. But um, uh, because they have not been mainstreamed, uh, you don't know the cost of their production, you don't know uh, how they have been able to survive multiple taxation and all kinds of things that is flung by the, to them by the government. So overall, what I'm saying is that the ease of the business has to be better, um, the uh, value of the Naira has to be enhanced, and the government should be able to do some type of uh, tax exemptions, moratoriums here and there, to make businesses afloat. Businesses are suffering. A lot of them are closing shops. Uh, some people can afford their daily bread, live well. Some of them are just trying to be in business to so employ people. But again, are, some of them are getting suffocated and they just close shops. Some of them just relocate abroad. And that is what has been happening. The manufacturing sector in Nigeria is, is being shut down, is being affected. Uh, companies are closing down. Even small, even hotels are having a difficult to run schools. Supermarkets are switching off even their air conditioner system. A lot. Mm -hmm. Media houses are operating half day now. Some of them can't run 24 hours anymore. Uh, so these are the things that happen. And once those things start coming, they start downsizing. And some of them close shop. And they will throw them back to the market. So federal government have no ethical, moral, nor even economic uh, capacity to start telling this uh, private sector what to pay or not. The way they are not even encouraging them in the first place. All right, <laughs> let's go to the Daily Independence because this still talks about um, the minimum wage sort of. Well, uh, the major headline here says, your days of worrying are over, Tinubu assures workers. Now, I don't know what that means. I don't know if it's the 25 to 35 percent that is the worrying of Nigerians that are over. I don't know what that means. But there's a smaller headline here that says, NLCTUC gives federal government one week to reverse electricity tariff hike. What do you think about this one? The electricity tariff was increased with over 200 percent, almost 300 percent um, and we know how the fuel subsidy was you know taken away the moment the president assumed office electricity tariff in fact in this case this morning we're talking about um, a DSTV multi-choice tariff as well so you're seeing all of this increase every single day your rent is being increased so many bills to pay really no, transportation no, no, we've, been, we've been assured by the Senate president that tough times will end mm, we don't know how soon but it's well, also a headline this here. is where we are um, so, well, NLC and TUC give federal government one week 
to reverse electricity tariff hike. What do you think about this one? And don't you think 200, over 200 percent is too much for electricity that some people have even said they don't see? Well, I don't know why people say it's 200 percent. In my own case, it's 300 percent because I was paying 71 naira for per unit before. I right now paying over 260 uh, naira. So when you wow. do the math, you will find out that. Uh, it's more than uh, it's more than that. Three hundred percent for me is two hundred and ten naira. So I'm paying more than a three hundred percent increase. So I don't know where people are ever calculating to over two hundred. It's more than over three hundred percent increase. Mm -hmm. And um, you know that is evil. There's no way to describe it again to say that these are evil. Uh, but what what will I say when we watch the federal government move or uh, move uh, one uh, one price from uh, oil, petrol from uh, a mere 165 naira to six uh, to 600 naira in the space of uh, uh, 60 days. Uh, so this is what emboldens people like uh, the discos uh, and to increase tariff. You are increasing tariff three, over 300 percent, almost 350 percent in the blink in one full swoop. Uh, it is not done in civilized clients. Nobody does that those kind of stuff in a in a civilized uh, country. I will pretend to be civilized, so we should act as one. Um, the most disgusting aspect of it is that the Minister for Power was in a Senate uh, uh, hearing and he threatened us. The minister that is being paid by public funds appointed to protect Nigerians, threatened Nigerians mm. before the Senate hearing that if we, if we reverse this petroleum, uh, this uh, electricity hike, that the country will be plunged into darkness. And the man is still minister. In Senate clients, they would ask him to resign and go because that is economic sabotage. Mm. He's threatening Nigeria with economic sabotage. And these are what we get. And the man is still there. So, first of all, the labor union should call for the minister of power to resign because it's not befitting for him to be there. He are taking sides with the capitalists. Instead of protecting the welfare of Nigeria, he are taking sides with the electricity, uh, with the uh, companies. Therefore, he's no more doing his work as minister. He is now a compromised individual from the statements he made on that day. Therefore, they should ask for his uh, for his uh, for his removal first, and then the uh, discos has to be picketed. The labor should picket the disco if after the seven days they have not uh, they have not reversed. And what the discos did was to start lumping almost everybody into band E. How many people are remaining in the, the bands that are not there? So okay. uh, it is, uh, it is uh, voodoo economics, if I will use that language, <laughs> where you just increase more, more than 350 percent uh, in one first sweep. And because it's a country that we are, we feel that like nothing will happen. The labor, I support the labor in this one. Let something happen. Let them, uh, uh, you know, pick us this uh, uh, discourse if they don't reverse it. And uh, because Nigeria cannot continue this suffering. And you can see that it's affecting the cost of everything. Uh, before you now, when I look, when I to a credit when I buy a recharge card, uh, recharge for five thousand naira, it gives me seventy. It gives me uh, almost seventy one units. Now I buy ten thousand naira, it gives me 40, 40 units. What kind of country operates that way? Mm -hmm. So I, I may be spending like forty thousand naira per month in electricity for what? So these are the things. Maybe even more. Electricity sector was increased in Bulgaria, and the people came out and protested. The minister, the prime minister, had to resign. So in this country, because we lap up everything and just stay, nothing happens. And that is why uh, these people just wake up one day and start, uh, you know, toying with uh, the, the, the welfare of Nigerians. The people should act. Hmm. <laughs> uh, well, I don't know. We've been saying this all the time, all the time, and um, we don't seem to be getting any results at all. Uh, but, um, well, let's hope for the best uh, to come. Um, Dangote has uh, suggested or has uh, opined that um, the biggest mess uh, created in 2023 was devaluation of the Naira. That's a small headline there uh, on the Daily Independent newspaper. Uh, do you think that was the greatest blunder in 2023? Or you'll find some other things that uh, we need to address that were wrongly done? Yeah, I will add another blunder. Dangote is right. Another blunder was the uh, the mobile of first subsidy. Right. So there were two major blunders committed under three months in the Tinubu administration, the first three months of the Tinubu administration. 
One is uh, the removal, uh, the removal of first subsidy. The second one was the floating of the naira. But and they're and telling us that the country is saving a lot of money because of that, you know. And they told us that they the were stealing spending, so much money. was spending a lot of money in a, in a maintaining presidential fleet. All giving us star codes to uh, uh, creating 42 ministries, having 42 ministers. It's continuous spending a lot of money. Why did they take out of that? So it's only they said that they'll make money from that. They want to suffer the masses. In every country, in every capitalist economy, the United States of America, we are trying to copy. The Britain, Canada, name it, Germany. Their citizens are heavily subsidized. Even in education, look at the education in the UK. They are for the foreign students virtually pay the fees for, for, for citizens. In America, the farmers are hugely sub subsidized so that they can compete favorably with countries like China in the international market. The other time, Companies like GM Motors and some other companies uh, wanted to do bankruptcy in the past, wanted to fight for bankruptcy. The American government gave them money, billions of dollars, to ensure that they stay in the market because they know that if those countries, uh, companies go bankrupt, that the citizens, many of the citizens, thousands of citizens will be out of job. They gave them money, bailouts. In this country, the only thing we, we, uh, we, we, you know, we produce and export a large quantity, which is petroleum, we cannot even refine it. Government's failure to refine petroleum products was not led to first subsidy. And government has not solved that problem. Yet, she removed the subsidy. The government always said there's corruption in subsidy. There's corruption in every sector. Why have we not closed down everywhere? We have not closed down Nigeria because there's corruption in the system. Mm -hmm. And government knows the people who are being corrupt. Government is in charge of the courts. Government is in charge of customs. Government is in charge of NPC. Government is in charge of the banks. So if there is corruption in the, in the, in the, in the, in the sequence of uh, whatever, in the value chain or uh, the processes, government can track it. Government is in charge of the DSS. Government is in charge of the Nigerian police, EFCC. So government, if government does not know who is doing the, uh, the, the corruption, then I don't know what they are doing. So it is very wrong to visit the incompetences of the system on Nigeria. Nigerians have voted for people to run the government on their behalf. And if government cannot track those who are corrupt, uh, who are uh, forcing the corruption in the, the subsidy regime, then it is not the fault of the Nigerian citizens. So instead of saying you are removing uh, subsidy, you have to sanitize subsidy. When you do that, so the treat and before you know it, four was telling six hundred, and dollar was naira was going down, and the next thing is you know they introduced the subsidy because you cannot tell me that when naira is changed for one one thousand nine hundred to a dollar, that well, people that were pointing for with dollar were, were not going to add money. So it was not to add, add money. And they went behind the scene and started introducing first subsidy. And that's why we have not paid more than 600 since July last year. And there's somebody told you the flows in either. Before, there were special rates for those who are bringing importing machineries, uh, those who were traveling, you know, for, uh, for business reasons. And, and there were some waivers. People were paying school fees, overseas school fees, and many others. And that helped to, you know, make things, uh, uh, you know, more stable. Because you are not right, you are not producing. We are not a manufacturing economy. The little one will manufacture petroleum, will take it out and refine and bring it back. So it is a, it's still the fault of the government. So government says it's our fault. We need to now subsidize to make sure that our naira doesn't, you know, go haywire. And the next thing, somebody entered government and said, no, it's not going to happen. So these are textbook prescriptions that we applied in a real life situation. And the next thing is that, of course, everything went bonkers. And what we now have is that the Naira slides so much, slid so much, and the government was forced to start regulating Forex again. So, you know, it's topsy turvy kind of actions, and we need to plan. Economy is not political statements. Mm. Economy is something you plan for the, for the short term, mid term, and long term. Exactly. And when you just make statements without really planning, subsidy is gone. There was no, there was no uh, uh, you know, structure to see what happens after the subsidy uh, goes. The same thing with the floating of the Naira. So I, I think if the president needs help in terms of uh, strengthening his economic theme, I think you can reach out to, you know, we have a lot of uh, Nigerians 
which are yeah, but it's building teams, it's yeah, building yeah, economic just, teams and all that. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, maybe that's the help he's asking for. But um, uh, maybe we also need another kind of help to make him humble enough to say, I've made a mistake in a particular thing and yes. confess what he has done wrongly. Now there is this story in Punch newspaper that says, government expenditure rose by 33% mm. in February. Uh, that is according, according to an MPC uh, member. So uh, government expenditure is rising. And then the people cannot even spend. They don't find whatever they're going to spend. And they tell us to, you know, make the sacrifices. Yeah. So what sacrifices are you making, you know, as, a, as the federal government? We're making on their behalf. No, but... <laughs> We're making... <laughs> <laughs> We're making <laughs> <laughs> well, they're still traveling, um, even though they've said, I think for the next three months, well, they still have all the, all the um, benefits or the pays that they get. They are not looking to cut down on anything, but then they expect the, the people to be able to sacrifice for them. What do you think about this one? <laughs> Well, Nigeria is a, Nigeria is a, is a bunch of contradictions, uh, it is full of contradictions because uh, you don't understand why the government will say, oh, tighten your belts, the citizens, we are going to remove subsidy, there is no money to fund subsidy. But you have money to fund a, a very, very extravagant lifestyle. We have money to maintain 42 ministers. We have money to fly overseas for frivolous reasons. We have money to uh, maintain, a, 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 you know, a blast of uh, 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 political aids and all those kind of stuff, but we don't have money to, uh, you know, to run subsidy. Uh, it's, it's not uh, any policy that is not uh, making your people, uh, uh, you know, your citizens to to feel the positive impact of governance. Then that that is not governance because the primary responsibility of the government is the security and welfare. So if the people are suffering in those both, both sides of that of uh, those. Uh, you know, foundational uh, reasons why you should be in government, then there's a problem somewhere. So uh, what are we doing for the two ministers? I, I don't think there are up to 10 of the ministers who have heard their voices saying anything or doing anything concrete. Mm -hmm. Yet we are maintaining all those things. Or also, I report you made some noise the last time. Mm -hmm. I don't know where that, whether it has entered the pool or whether that the committee is still working. <laughs> uh, we need to pop down on a lot of things from the government side. Now it is rising. We are renovating buildings with billions. We are building coastal roads. Is it the ghost that we use the coastal roads? <laughs> Nigerians needs to survive first before all these things. Right. And that's the problem. Oh, well, we'll survive. They've promised us there will be emergency supply of fuel um, in 15 days. Emergency mm -hmm. supply mm -hmm. of fuel. They've promised us our our days of suffering are going to be oh, over okay. and all that. Um, even the the northern governors had a security meeting far away in the U.S. <laughs> you know, there was no location in Nigeria to mm. have that security meeting. But we'll keep praying, we'll keep talking, and we'll keep uh, hoping Doing that something best. positive happens. But this is uh, where we can, uh, we should wrap up yes, on, this, on segment. this segment of the show. Thank you so much, Dr. Ambrose, for coming. Thank you very much for having me. All right. We're speaking with Dr. Ambrose Igboke, is the Chairman Guild of Public Affairs Analyst of Nigeria, Enugu State Chapter. And we've just been reviewing the papers, taking global stories, making headlines in our national dailies. We'll go on a short break and when we return, we'll be looking at our first hot topic. Please stay with us. <laughs>